Hey, hey everyone, welcome back to Crazy Craft Obsessions YouTube channel. My name is Cassandra, I'm the one that runs the channel. And today I'm going to take you through a process video of a 12x12 layout using some mixed media. You can see the close-ups here. Now, I'm using a piece of regular white cardstock. It's just a 12x12 American Craft 80 pound cardstock. And I got inspired by this banner from this, the Vicky Burton Sweet Rush collection. And I think it's from either an ephemera pack or a paper repack. But I loved, loved, loved the colours on it. So I'm taking a pencil and just making a mark where each of the colours go because I knew it wanted it up in that right hand corner. And then I'm coming in with my Tim Holtz watercolour pencils. Oh my god guys, if you haven't tried these, they are amazing. I've done a whole swatch video based on them on different cardstocks and stuff like that. And I'll leave a link to that down below. Um, that you can watch to get an idea of how they work and all the different colours that are available at the moment. But Tim Holtz did leave a little sneaky peeky um, in his latest distress colour video saying that more colours of the watercolour pencils will be released very shortly. So I'm very excited about that one. Now I'm taking them. The best part about them is that you can wet them down with a brush. They're highly pigmented so you can paint them on. Very portable if you go to crops. Very easy to use. Uh, the first colour that I used, I tried to match them as best to that banner as possible, is the Barn Door. Then this one here is Kitsch Flamingo because it was a pink but it wasn't quite red enough. So I've come in with a little bit more Barn Door just to make that a bit redder. And then we have Tattered Rose, then Seedless Preserves, Villainous Potion, Peacock Feathers, Crushed Olive, Peeled Paint and Mustard Seed. So before I go on a tangent, I thought I'd just get all of those colour names out in the open. They're from set 1, 2 and 3. They, they span across the board of those. Um, and they will be linked or, or at least listed down in the description box below. Um, so these watercolour pencils, I have fallen in love with them along with quite a few other people. What makes them different from other watercolour pencils? Well, they are highly, highly pigmented which is amazing. You wouldn't get this technique with very many watercolour pencils, if not the most expensive high-end watercolour pencils, not craft ones. So the cost point of these for the amount of pigment is fantastic. They're also a hard, I'm not going to call it a lead because it's not a lead, but like a hard based inner part where the pigment is held. So they are very sustainable in travel. Uh, they're woodless, so there's no sharpening required. And if you do sharpen them, you can use the shavings because they're all water soluble. So you can literally sharpen them into a little pot of container and make your own watercolor paints using them. There's so many techniques that you can do. You can do the watercolor pencil on the surface and then wet it down, especially over gesso. You can use the technique I'm using here to apply them with a brush. You can wet down the shavings and use them. You can splatter with them you can what else can you do you can apply them with a brayer you can apply them with a sponge it's just never ending the amount of techniques that you can do with these and they are fan fantastic so i'm very excited for more being released along the way then i have let these dry and i'm trying to blend it into each other along that edge i'm trying to cross over the edge a little bit blend it into each other so that we get a smooth transition um, from color to color. And it's not your classic rainbow by any means. It kind of goes from red to pinks to purples to blues to greens, but there's a harsh distinction between all of them. They're not easily blendable, I would say. So I'm doing a few splatters over the top as well, just to try and get a decent transition to that color. Oh, excuse me. Um, so once I'm done with that, I let it dry for a second just so all of that paint can sink into the paper because it is not coated with gesso or anything like that. It's just just a plain Jane piece of paper. Um, and it does warp a little bit and curl a little bit with the amount of water that I use, but I've got a solution for that. And finally adding that mustard seed. And you can see the crushed olive and the mustard seed look very similar in here, but in real life they're a green and a yellow. 
and I loved how this turned out. I thought it was fantastic. It's been quite a while since I've done some mixed media, so I was excited to get back into it. Then we're going to come in with some splatters. So to splatter it, I'm just really wetting it down, getting that pigment on my paintbrush and hitting my paintbrush over the page. It's super simple and super easy. There we go. I'm rinsing it off in my Harry Potter cup each time that I do it. Trusty Harry Potter. Um, and I'm using a number eight round brush for anyone that's interested. It is a watercolor brush. Once that's done, I'm going to come in with some paper towel. So I'm going to let those splatters sit on the surface for a little bit and then I'm going to mop them up because I'm an impatient person and that is the only reason why. <laughs> um, otherwise they would have been fine to air dry. So I was on a, a tight schedule. Oliver was having a nap and I, I had to work very fast in order to, <laughs> to get as much done as what I did and even then I think it spanned over like four or five naps making this layout. So once that's all dry, I'm going to come in with my embellishing I believe no I'm going to trim it down so this is the Tim Holtz rotary trimmer I got it for Christmas in a haul video which I'll leave a link to down below if you haven't seen it it's full of all sorts of goodies um, but it's a rotary trimmer that I got for Christmas released by Tim Holtz the blade is never meant to dull it's meant to be a self sharpening blade um, so far I like it a lot the only thing I can't do with it is gut a page because it, it doesn't have a set point to the blade so it's hard to estimate where the blade's going to go. I am taking a 12 by 12 piece of American Crafts cardstock in black and I'm going to adhere the white cardstock. So if you're interested in how much I trimmed off, I trimmed off a quarter off two sides um, so that I get a 1 8 border on each side. I had to think for a second. Now when I go to stick this on, because my page is warped, it doesn't go perfectly, which is a classic. It happens all the time, perfectly fine. Don't stress. I've got a solution. I didn't line it up perfectly. I'm a wonky donkey, if ever there was one. Um, everything I do is a bit wonky donkey, so <laughs> I've come up with some solutions to fix it. What I'm going to do is put it in my trimmer, and I'm going to line the blade of my trimmer up with the edge of the paper that's the furthest away so it does end up being a thinner border but it ends up being straight around all edges now you're probably wondering it's no longer 12 by 12 no it isn't it's probably like 11 and three quarters of an inch or something by the time i trimmed off all sides no one's going to take out a ruler and measure it they're just going to go oh that's a nice layout so don't panic problem is solved it no longer looks as wonky donkey I can't say it's totally not wonky donkey but it's not as wonky donkey and you've got a black border on your page no one's going to measure it everything will be perfectly fine it's time to let go of the necessity to get everything perfect because we're never going to catch up on our albums if we keep that <laughs> I know I won't um so moving on from from that I've got that banner, I've propped it up on foam dots and I'm putting some glue on the back of the foam dots, not because of the fault with the foam dots, I just don't trust them in the Australian weather. So I like to add some liquid adhesive to everything. Now I'm coming in with my two photos. This is my dearest partner Jacques and this story behind these photos, me went out with Jacques's family um, to see some Christmas lights, there's a, a garden near us that does massive, massive Christmas lights. Um, and he insisted on taking this, it was like a Barbie brush that he'd bought me for Christmas thinking that it was a proper brush. Um, and he insisted on taking it with us. And every time I went to take a photo of the family, of him in front of the lights, he's like, oh no, 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 I need to brush my hair. So that's the story that I'm scrapping today. I managed to snapshot a few photos of him brushing his hair right before getting a photo. He thought it was hilarious. It was hilarious. It got a little bit annoying in the middle, but it was hilarious. Um, so that is the story that I'm telling. And I wanted my title to say, does my hair look good in this? Because it's like, um, it reminded me of a girl going, does my bum look good in these jeans? So that is going to be my title. <laughs> Does my hair look good in this? It is a very lengthy title for a scrapbook page, but it does really make me giggle when I think about it, and um, I'm sure he'll get the joke too. 
So I've picked out two different letter fonts for this. One of them is the letters that came with the Vicky Booten Sweet Rush collection. That's the gold and black ones. And the other one is a puffy scripty writing from American Crafts. And I had trouble figuring out the placement for those terribly. Absolutely terribly because it was such a big title. I didn't want my photos to take up too much of my layout. So you did see me trim one of those down because I'd gone to the hassle of doing all that mixed media. I didn't want it covered up. Um, in the end, I ended up putting the title over this left hand side and having it run down the left hand side of the page, which worked well, <laughs> but it took me a long time to get there. The running writing does have a lot of loop de loopy style, loop de loopy styles in it. Listen to me babbling. Um, and my way of coming out with a solution for those was to overlap the hair and good with the loop de loops of the Y and the the T and the H and tuck them underneath because you can still see what it says. You know they're there. They're just. Um, it's not as big of a gap between them. So just keep that in mind if ever you do something with two different fonts or the same font and you don't want a bigger gap. There is no rules in scrapbooking. You can cover up alphas if you want. Totally allowed. You do you. And this is what worked for me for this layout. Now I loved that black and white camera. It's from the ephemera packet and there's a pair of black and white scissors that are going to come in as well because it's hair. Hair reminds me of scissors um, and that's how we got to that piece of ephemera. Don't question it, just go with it is my new motto. <laughs> I'm also cutting apart this piece of ephemera with a little banner saying that says something like um, keep to the awesome times or something along those lines. I've come in with the black word awesome and I'm coming in with some flowers. Now everything except for the black and white ephemera is going to be fairly tone on tone. I've got the blue and purple flower crossing the blue and purple zone of mixed media, the red flower up in the red zone with the red banner and the yellow flower in the yellow zone. I'm also going to come in off the sticker sheet and pull in a yellow little tab that I think it says photo op, which it definitely was. Um, and that's pretty much the extent of embellishing that goes on the page because I wanted the highlight to be the mixed media. I also come in with the puffy stickers but not the puffy heart stickers. I come in with some little gold dots and sprinkle them around. I do add some glue to them just to hold them in place because they do have a habit of losing their stick over time. So my motto is liquid glue for everything. Um, and I put them in two, five, five different places on the layout, just here and there, just to add some gold to tie in those gold letters. And then once I'm finished there, I'm going to come in with my journaling. To do my journaling, I'm bringing in my T-square ruler and a black pen, and I'm just doing some lines. I like to do my lines a bit um, jagged, I guess is the word, so that you can't tell if they're exactly measured right pro tip if you're a wonky donkey. Um, and then I thought the layout needed something more just to finish it off. I know it had the black border, but it didn't quite look completely finished to me. And in the end, I ended up going around the edges with a black pen in a faux stitch. Um, so I do speed this one up quite a lot and the lighting does go a little bit astray on there for some reason. I don't know whether it was glare or what happened to the lighting on this, but I left it in there to show you how easy it is when you have a black pen to add finer details and what it looks like when it's fully finished with that black pen. It kind of goes from a regular layout to like a chef's kiss layout with the, the finer details. So I left it all in there for you to have a look at and then there'll be a few close-ups. Um, the photos will be up on my Instagram and Facebook page which will be linked down below as well as the community page if you want to take a look. Um, and if you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.